is this book such a phenomenon? It was so much more than just a bestseller. It really changed the way people talked about this subject all over the world. Why this book and why now? Well, it has sold more than a million and a half copies now. And similar sales, I think, have been posted for uh, Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens. So it looks as though there is something going on. I think people are getting a bit fed up with... Uh, other people thrusting their imaginary friends down their throat. Uh, I think especially in America. Hear the applause there? Well, along with his father, Francis Schaeffer, our next guest was one of the architects and founders of the religious right movement, rubbing elbows with the likes of Pat Robertson and James Dobson. He's since become an outspoken critic, calling the fundamentalist right dogmatic and dangerous. Schaefer chronicled his experience in his best-selling book, Crazy for God, How I Grew Up as One of the Elect, Helped Found the Religious Right, and Lived to Take All, or Almost All, of It Back. Well, Frank Schaefer's latest book is just out, Patience with God, Faith for People Who Don't Like Religion or Atheism. And he takes on some of those new atheists like Dawkins and determines that they may be as bad as their Christian fundamentalist foes. Well, thanks for coming into the studio, Frank. Thanks for having um, me. Your book was a fascinating read. Let's start at the top. You say it's a conversation, not a sermon. What yeah. do you mean? Uh, well, what I mean by that is that my objection to the new atheists and to the fundamentalists that we help put on the map, like James Dobson and Jerry Falwell, is one and the same. It's not a question of content. Atheism may be absolutely correct, uh, agnosticism may be, Christianity may be, Buddhism may be. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that the tone of the conversation is similar. When you read Harris uh, saying there are some people whose beliefs are so dangerous they ought to be killed for them, and when you read, uh, when you read Dawkins, when you read Hitchens, the tone strikes me as what I grew up with in the fundamentalist camp. And so that line of, you know, um, don't thrust your imaginary friends down our throat, Sounds familiar? Yeah, because it would be, it would be like an evangelical Christian saying, uh, you know, you need Jesus. Uh, they're, they're saying you need to live without God and you'll be a better person for it. My mother used to tell people they needed to accept Jesus to be complete. Dawkins and Hitchens are also proselytizing. So really, I guess what, what uh, I'm trying to say in the book is that trying to evangelize other people from a perspective of saying, I'm right, you're wrong, and if you believe what you believe, on top of being wrong, you're an idiot, and you may be evil, um, that's the fundamentalist stroke that is similar in all these people's p programs. You also skewer Dawkins for his uh, marketing techniques. Well, I've seen them before. You know, I have a little passage in the book where I talk about a thing my mom used to carry called a gospel walnut, which was a hollowed out walnut filled with ribbon of different colors to illustrate red for Jesus' blood, white that your heart would be washed free of sin. And as a young teen, I can remember being mortified on train trips uh, when mom would pull this thing out and show people and try to get them saved. Well, lo and behold, you go on Dawkins' website, and he's got a little A pin for atheists, and then you read all these testimonials from his followers, his groupies, saying, yeah, I wore my A pin to a party, struck up three great conversations, converted one person to atheism. Well, fill in the word Jesus, and we're back in, in 1959 with my mom and me on a train somewhere in Europe with me just trying to pretend I'm not part of this family. Yeah, but do you think it's a false equivalence? I mean, on the one hand, you've got selling a lot of pins. On the other hand, you've got the people that you describe as creating a dangerous army of God of well, dollars raised by the millions. Yeah, and if you and, and, and those, uh, as you have, who read the book will soon see that I am the toughest critic of right-wing American evangelical Christianity, not even right-wing Christianity, just dogmatic Christianity. I'm tougher on these guys than Dawkins and Hitchens are because I write from the inside. I actually know what I'm talking about. So I don't just stick with the Spanish Inquisition and Crusades and all these things that have been whipped to death. I actually knew Jerry Falwell. He used to fly me down to his school in his own private jet so I could speak to his students. I come from the inside and my critique is extraordinarily harsh of them, uh, people who are writing the Left Behind series, all these other guys. But uh, what I see in terms of the tone of the conversation is very much the same on both sides. And that really bothers me because I don't want to live in Sarah Palin's America forever where Sarah Palin says, you're a real American, you're not a real American. I'm a real American, you're not. You know, this, this polarization and dividing people, it's, we may have to accept for, for politics, but to accept this kind of conversation when it comes to spirituality is ridiculous. Look, we're all spiritual creatures. If we weren't, Dawkins and Hitchens wouldn't be looking for answers. They may find different answers than me, but they're still looking. And so, you know, you don't just write off other people this way.
What about those folks that you describe as, as dangerous, their dogmat dogmatism um, taking us in a very dangerous direction? Did you see them at work in, in election 09? Oh, yeah, very much so. Uh, you know, when you look at the way the, the, the Republican Party split in upstate New York, uh, you know, we, we, here are people who are ready to, to basically write off even their own political party in the name of ideological purity. And this is insane. Um, the, you know, for I, 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 before I quit, I was a lifelong Republican. I knew Jack Kemp. I hung around with the Bush family. Barbara Bush came and was a guest of my mother in our home. You know, we were as close to these people as you can get. Um, the fact of the matter is, the old Republican Party's gone now. Uh, what, what, you know, William F. Buckley wouldn't recognize these people. One of his best friends was Gore Vidal. They went out and had drinks together. You know, they didn't hate each other. When you, when you look at the party of Sarah Palin, which is what it's becoming, with sort of Rush Limbaugh and lunatics like Glenn Beck in the wings, you know, who left of their own devices without Fox News behind them, would just be standing on a street corner barking at the moon all by himself. I mean, crazy time. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, these guys have now wormed themselves into the center of a political party, and it's incipient fascism. We're at, the, we're at a threshold here where the Republican Party not only doesn't represent conservatism anymore in the classic sense of, say, William F. Buckley, it doesn't even represent American politics at the extremes. It's something different now. It's become a religious cult in itself. And you see this very clearly looking at Sarah Palin, you know, having demons cast out of her before she runs for the, for the, the governorship of Cali uh, California. Yeah, I wish <laughs> um, she would have made it there, of Alaska. And, you know, what you see is, is the extreme of evangelicalism now in the heart of a major political party. And this is very worrying to me. Take a look at this clip from a video game made on the basis of the Left Behind films. Do you want to set up Left Behind for those who haven't seen the film and read the books? Well, if you haven't been in a bookstore and seen a stack of books, you know, it's 18 feet high every time a new one comes out. 16 novels, Left Behind series. Jerry Jenkins, an old friend of mine, uh, you know, co-wrote these books. And they're all about the return of Jesus Christ. Basically, these guys are rooting for Armageddon. The worse the world gets, the quicker Jesus comes back. And if you look at the Christian Zionist movement, for instance, they're literally rooting for Armageddon. These are the guys that protest vociferously every time there's a peace talk because they want war in the Middle East so Jesus will come back. And the whole Left Behind series is predicated on a sort of a novelization of what they believe is going to be happening with Jesus returning, taking everybody away, and the rest of you burn. And you say the game is sort of a religious blessing on violence. Take a look. You wouldn't. You make the case the case very powerfully about the danger here. You wouldn't equate or, cons or or describe as equivalent the danger posed by that, which is being which is playing out in U.S. policy. Mm -hmm. I think in lots of ways, certainly our attitude to the world and right. the other, and the danger posed by a Dawkins disdain for no. Those I who believe. I think that the religious right is far more dangerous than you might call the irreligious left. I mean, in America, in our history, the people who have killed people in this country, whether it's killed the Kennedys or killed Martin Luther King or walked into the Holocaust Museum and gunned down a black guard, you know, generally speaking, these are not physicists teaching at NYU who may have a chip on their shoulder about God. But having said that, when you get to, for instance, Harris in his book, he calls for the killing of people whose beliefs are so dangerous they're beyond the pale. What's he mean by that? I mean, this is a weird statement coming from a community that celebrates tolerance. Go a step further. Why the hell did Hitchens back George W. Bush uh, in fighting the Iraq war and, and become his pitch man? You know, what's his problem with Islam that he thinks that the solution to, to, to the Islamic hordes as he sees them is to bomb them into the Stone Age? <laughs>